Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and today I'm going to show you a very awesome tool that's going to help you get the absolute most performance out of your simulator whether it be FPS, smoothness, or just the overall clarity of visuals. Stick around to find out more about this because it's quite an amazing update guys, stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, you guys, so first up, a big shout out to the Island Sim Pilot. His uh, link to his channel will be found down in the description below. He is a fantastic resource for truly maximizing the performance, clarity, and just overall stability of the simulator. His channel has been a godsend on more than one occasion for me. Very, very grateful for his channel and his work. Next thing to Reset Transponder, who is the developer of Auto FPS and uh, Thank you very much for bringing it to 2024. As we all know, it was a big, big help in uh, 2020, and it's just repeating uh, its cycle, if you will, in 2024. Now, the big things that I want you guys to look at right now is you guys can see the target FPS. I have it set to auto target FPS. If you look under general tab on the right, it is set to auto, and you can see the target is 71. Now, we're only running about 35 frames per second right now. But if you look out the window, everything is smooth as glass. That is the biggest thing that I am noticing is an absolute incredible stability. And now you're seeing FPS 66, there's the 70, 71. And also look at the uh, LOD, the level of detail. I never run it at 200, you guys, ever. Um, so you can see at times it's actually going higher than what I would normally set at. So we are coming out of Boston Logan International, so a very populated area, a very busy area, and a very detailed area as far as the terrain and scenery goes. But there's no stuttering. We don't have any stuttering happening. We don't have any breaks in the frame rate as far as our experience. It's an absolutely amazing piece of software, and it really doesn't require you to do much. You can also see under the general tab that we have flight type. We are currently set to VFR. So it's going to maximize our display based on how we are um, flying. If it knows that we're gonna be way up at high altitude, so that's the best way to think about that, um, is VFR obviously gonna be down low, IFR you're gonna be up high. The higher you go, the less you know constraints that you're gonna have in regard to your um, GPU and CPU, because you're not gonna have to create quite as much detail when it comes down to it. Now, frame, frame generation is enabled on my computer, uh, but we are in TAA, we are not using DLSS. So that's another big kicker, that's a really big point to, to mention here. Now, as you guys can see, again, everything is just as smooth as smooth can be. The popping, the scenery popping that is very notorious in both 2020 and 24 is very limited here. Now we're not over a big area with a lot of skylines, but we have a lot of trees, there's a lot of lakes, there's a lot of detail, it's clear skies, so those details are supposed to be very accentuated. Let's head back over near the city. And we're also running a glass cockpit. That's something to be considered as well, and I'm recording at the same time. So anytime that you record, guys, for those of you who aren't content creators, you do lose um, anywhere from six to 10 frames, depending on what you're recording. Now, VR Flight Sim Guy did a great demonstration of this in VR, so I'm not doing VR today, but I can tell you guys in VR, it's a the same thing. The performance increase was very significant, especially once again when it came to the stuttering. The stability of the simulator was far, far better with auto FPS enabled, and I was getting much higher details than what I was getting without it. Um, so you can see that right now, even the level of detail, that's the big one, is the LODs. Both of the LODs are gonna be the big one. Um, those are your level of details. Um, so anytime you see those climbing above 100, you're already above what I normally set it to. Um, and this is also on an RTX 4080. 
and you guys can see what the GPU usage up there at the top of the screen. Currently we're bouncing between 75% and 60%, which I'd like to see that be a bit higher to be honest with you. Um, but let's try one more thing, something I have forgotten to do on more than one occasion. And I'm going to set the priority in task manager for the simulator up to high. For those of you who don't know, you go to open up your task manager, go to the details tab, find flight simulator, right click, set, set priority and go to high. Do not set it to real time. You'll have a very bad day if you do that. But we'll see if that doesn't help anything at all. Looks like everything is like about pretty stable. Got a few more FPS out of it. But it's just smooth as glass. This is the smoothest performance I've ever gotten out of the simulator using this tool. So I highly recommend that you guys give this a shot. I'm going to walk you guys through how to install it. It's a very simple process. There isn't much to it. More or less, I'm going to just give you a couple of gotchas and things that you want to watch for. It really comes down to the WASM module from Moby Flight that needs to be installed sometimes beforehand. Um, but the software also auto detects whether or not there's a new release. So that's helpful as well. Let's come back over here to the skyscrapers for a bit near the city. The other really cool thing about this is you can set this software to start automatically depending on whether or not uh, you want it to just run when you launch the simulator or if you want to have control over it. I prefer to have control over it. I haven't really had any issues on whether I install it or uh, start it first or start the sim first. It doesn't seem, at least in my experience, to care either way. But the performance is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. There's that LOD coming back up. And you can mess with the expert settings. I did not. I have them shown here on the screen right now, just sort of for your benefit. And notice as we get down lower and closer to the city, we are still getting that frame rate we're looking for. It's doing a great job of maintaining that, that rain. The popping is very limited. I saw a little bit of texture changes on the buildings here a second ago. Again, this works in both, so it has a day mode and a night mode, as well as 2D and VR. You can see the traffic is maxed out. That car just jumped off the freeway right there. Glad we got to be a part of that. This is kind of cool for me because I've actually been to Boston. All right. So now let me show you guys um, the process of installing it and how simple this truly is to use. 
Okay, guys, as we get into the installation process, once again, thank you to Island Sim Pilot for all of his hard work. A link to this channel will be down in the description below, but you guys can see just his last couple of videos. He is really big on uh, performance videos. He does a lot of content um, in and out of that, but a lot, like you can see right here, he's got a whole section, MSFS, graphics, performance, and tips. Tons of videos on how to maximize your performance. Really, really great channel, you guys. He's very, very good. He's also a real-world pilot, so uh, any of the information that he brings in regard to aviation is very helpful as well. But now let's get into the nitty-gritty. So two things that I'm just going to recommend you guys download out of the gate. I know it is stated that you may or may not need to do this. I recommend just doing it and getting it out of the way. So first, there's going to be two links. One of them is going to be, oops, to the Moby Flight Wasm module. And you're going to come right here and download this. You're going to extract it. Let me go to display capture for just a minute. There we go. Let me minimize some of the stuff. Get it out of you guys' hair. Okay. Oh, son of a gun. Stupid windows. There we go. All right. So first, you're going to want to find your community folder. So you can see here, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, community, and you're going to drop that folder right in here, Moby Flight Event Module. You're going to extract it, put it into your community folder, and you when you open it, you should see this, Content Info Modules. Okay, so again, 2024, community, Moby Flight Event Module, and when you open it, this is all you should see. If you see another folder, you don't have it installed correctly. This is the order in which you should see the um, content. Okay, so that's the first step. Then what you're going to want to do is you will um, come to this page here. You will come down to the... Actually, let me back up one. The link will take you to here. You're going to click right here where it says Initial Release. Select. Come right here where it says Installer.exe. You're going to download that. Once you download that, you're going to put it wherever you want. In my case, I created a folder called Auto FPS. There we go. Auto FPS. And this is the EXE that you will download. You simply launch it, and it will take care of the rest of the work for you. You will create a short uh, cut on your desktop that will look like this. Simply launch that. It'll bring you to this window. I recommend just using the auto target. It is use, doing a very, very good job. I'm having zero problem with it. Um, I haven't had to change a thing. Like, I mean, I have the expert setting shown, but if you click out, that's all you get. And it's just working beautifully, guys. It's it's an amazing piece of software. So again, thank you very much also to Reset Transponder for all of your hard work on this. This is absolutely fantastic, you guys. Um, the performance is the best that I have seen in the sim. And this works with both the Pimax Crystal Light and in 2D. The Crystal Light, I gained about anywhere from 10 to 15 frames per second, depending on what I was doing, um, as well as, again, the stability. The stuttering was almost non-existent. Now, you guys can see we're getting a bit of stuttering right now. I have noticed that every time I come back from a pause, it starts to do this and then smooths right back out again, which to me makes sense. Um, as we pause it, I imagine the connection is stalled um, and then once we unpause, it starts recaching again. So some of that makes sense to me. Um, but it's it's working beautifully. If you guys want the utmost performance, and again, by the way, this software works for both 2024 and 2020. Now, 2020, I believe, does have a separate uh, executable. So make sure that you guys check that out on the GitHub page. But uh, anyways, guys, I hope you found this video useful. As always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next one.